Welcome to Behind the Badge, the podcast from SBC Sponsorship and Insider Sport, discussing the latest approaches to sports sponsorship. Welcome to the inaugural edition of the Behind the Badge podcast, brought to you by SBC Sponsorship, a series where we talk to some of the biggest clubs from around the world about the commercial aspect of sport and how they ensure maximum fan engagement and really make the most out of their partnerships. After a long and successful spell in the Premier League, many felt that relegation would condemn Burnley to a long stay in the second tier. However, evolution both on and off the pitch meant that Vincent Company's Clarets bounced back and have embraced real momentum. Today's episode of Behind the Badge is a special one. I'm joined by the Head of Commercial at Burnley, Marcus Meller, and as always, SBC Sponsorship Director, George Harborn to break down the commercial growth at Turf Moor. Firstly, welcome, Marcus, and obviously congratulations on the promotion last season. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, it was it was not very little to do. Well, in fact, nothing to do with me. I'm uh, I'm happy to ride on the success of uh, of Burnley Football Club. So, yeah, thanks thanks so much for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. No, thanks for coming on, Marcus. We, we appreciate it as well. Yeah, certainly. It's uh, been gr- great to watch Burnley grow and flourish under Vincent Company. I guess, to kick us off, just uh, a few words on the, the man. I'm a red, so it's hard for me to heap too much praise on Vinny Company, but... Yeah, so some, some some much deserved praise from yourself for for the the manager. Yeah, I think he he was a leader during his playing career, right? And he's he's certainly certainly brought that to his managerial career. Um, you know, true leader of 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 a, of a team. I think you know you talk about the resurrection of us as a club, and you know he's he's folk, he, he's he's pivotal to that. You know, um, yeah, as I say, last season we were given very little chance. You know, pretty much a whole new squad, sixteen new individuals, or might have even be more actually, but. You know, a new team that had to gel quickly in, in probably one of the hardest leagues to actually get out of. Um, it, he, he, you know, he's he's done nothing short of a of, of a of a wonderful job for for the club. So, and uh, yeah, we're all we're all super proud of, of what he's what he's achieved. I think he's uh, you know very few interactions I've had with him. He's a very impressive individual, uh, and yeah, that that's definitely you know transcended into what he's managed to deliver for the club on the pitch as well, which is great. I mean, do, uh, part of that kind of that transition, I guess, under under Vincent Company is, is you know phase one complete return back to the Premier League. But from your perspective, Marcus, being being in, in the Premier League this year and having that spell in the Championship with the club, and then contrast that with what you're experiencing now in the Premier League, how is that? How how has that been commercially? Like how what what has that adjustment been like from Championship to Premier League? Has that been a shock for you in terms of kind of? the types of conversations you're having now versus before yeah i think so i mean it's 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 a good it's a good headache to have in the commercial world um obviously because you know, put simply that the the, the number the number of eyeballs that are on the premier league you know far 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 exceed those that are on the championship so you know in terms of those conversations i mean they did become a lot more global so you know to, you know conversations the championship are very much more of a, of a national place when it comes to sort of branding assets that we can offer Obviously, when you move to the Premier League, it becomes a lot more of a global entity and a, a global sale. So, you know that that that's that's probably the biggest change is obviously the value of, of deals that we've done uh, leading up to the Premier League are quite substantially higher as well. So it's always cool to have those conversations. Um, but I think yeah, the, the biggest change is probably the, the 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 real driver behind why brands want to be involved um, is because of that. It's because of the global reach of the Premier League. So. You know that's a big part of it, and I think we're we're trying to you know commercially be, uh, you know, utilize all the tools that we I'm sure we'll get into further in this podcast that Burnley are doing kind of beyond just the realms of the Premier League as well, um, to really sort of leverage our, you know our USP as a as really a brand marketing platform and tool for for brands. Yeah, absolutely. And and just just on that, you know, you've kind of talked about the platform that the the Premier League provides, but what platform are you providing for yourself with the new ownership? You know, you look at other clubs as well, and the kind of the multi club. Uh, approach that they're taking uh, one of the kind of plans was what's the kind of route for Burnley moving forward and and talk us a little bit about what you guys have created for yourself in many ways irrespective of the Premier League the investment in your infrastructure you know the digital assets that you have now at the stadium the LED boards and all the rest of it that was done in the championship so talk us through that a little bit yeah I think you know it's testament to our ownership group uh where they're, they're extremely ambitious in terms of where they want to take this this club so you know they they really have put in the basis for us to to really flourish as a commercial commercial team and commercial sales engine really. Uh, so yeah, I mean in terms of in terms of their ambitions off the pitch, you know it's it's no secret that we've got some fairly 
um, now famous investors who were involved in the club, which is which is great and, and certainly elevates our our presence, particularly obviously skewed towards the US. So you know when ALK Capital came in and took took, took ownership of the club uh, over two years ago now, um, you know they were they set lofty uh, you know ambitions and goals for where they wanted to get get to. I think realistically, if you if you probably ask Alan, our chairman. Uh, and some of our others were, were probably a little bit ahead of schedule of where we'd hoped to be, um, you know, given last given how well last season went. But as you say, George, the, the foundations were really built in terms of actually how do we become more, uh, you know, or a greater commercial proposition slash you know market tool for for, for brands. So you know that that investment into our infrastructure, I think, you know, we worked very closely with ADIs. Sort of predates my my time at the club, but it you know, worked very closely with ADI and the really sort of team now is is that kind of. Uh, show pony, as it were, when yeah, you know when like they look at stadium. yeah, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. So, you know what what we can offer to brands that, in terms of that, you know that that, that visibility in stadiums is is, is it as outstanding. And I think, you know, we're really, you know, as beyond that investment, we're also investing heavily in terms of our data platforms that we use at the club to ensure that we are, you know, correctly a value it and b understanding what what those assets are worth. So, there's a there's a long term strategy that we've got to make sure we play further and further into that. I think we are. We you know we'll continually pivot our our proposition in the market, understanding those you know being really data driven with it as as we are on the pitch, as we are now becoming more and more off the pitch. It's it's really sort of a data driven you know marginal gains um, kind of environment that we operate in as a club. That's uh, really interesting, Marcus. And I, I guess the uh, to tap in more to the data the data side of things because that that's fascinating to me. And it, I guess you have so much data available as a football club, but how you correctly utilize that is vital. Yeah, I think you know it's. I'm not, we're not we're not reinventing the wheel here, but we you know we've we've sort of historically probably haven't been as savvy with with the data as, as we could have been as a club. So particularly when we look at ourselves as a commercial proposition, you know, I'm sure we'll, we might get into it a bit more. But like for example, our relationship with TikTok, uh, that really sort of gives us a USP in terms of our women's our women's proposition. Um, you know, probably historically speaking, candidly, we haven't been the best in terms of actually what is that as a standalone proposition? What can we value that as? So. We we've really looked this season into into a couple of platforms that we'll be utilising to really understand and drive that you know that 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 true understanding of the media value and uh, as well as sort of the impressions we deliver on you know across a variety of, of our of our assets both online and, and physical and stadia so that we know that we we, we uh, well two reasons really a we can you know correctly value our propositions and b you know, it, when we're in the market, be confident in terms of what we're asking for because we know it, what it delivers. Um, and also, be it's also so we so that we can uh, we can report sort of correctly for brands as well, and 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 really sort of tell you know keep, deliver results. Yeah, that is something I was going to ask you about actually the uh, relationship with TikTok, and I, I can't let you mention your your women's team hugely successful without speaking about the World Cup and how great the Lionesses were. And now, I guess moving forward, how you were you know, your your team sort of build on that and continue to get maximum exposure for the women's game. Yeah, I think it's a massive part of what we're doing. So we actually announced earlier this year that we, uh, yeah, essentially the, there isn't, we don't have standalone partners. We actually amalgamated our social media accounts that we did previously have sort of standalone Instagrams. We brought that into one. So all of our women's news is reported on our, on our main Instagram account as it, you know, the only Instagram account for the club, we still do have um, Twitter for, you know, match updates more, more specifically for our women's team. But yeah, in terms of our relationship with TikTok, so that's, that's something that we've renewed again for this season. We're working more closely with them. So beyond just, uh, beyond just the live stream, we're going to be working with them on a behind the scenes look at our women's team. So, you know, uh, episodic, episodic sort of series, season. we'll be working with them to, to sort of drive a bit more insight into what our women's team actually looks like. Kind of when you lift the bonnet off, I suppose, as it were. Uh, and we're really getting really great by, and you know, uh, we're very closely with uh, our head of women's football, Lola, uh, who's who's a real advocate for for the game. And and uh, you know, but for us, it's we were pretty we were one goal off potentially being promoted. The, the league system's extremely difficult to get out of is in the women's uh, women's league because they have the North and South League, and then the two winners of that league go into a playoff. So you can win the league and not be promoted. Uh, which is crazy. Uh, so, so yeah, that it's the, you know this we, we got close and and uh, and last year was the first year we had our we had our um, women play at turf more in the in the history of of the women's team. So you know in terms of what we're looking to try and do, that's very much on our radar. And I think you know f- for me commercially, what, what what I'm trying to do is completely understand what those you know what our TikTok streaming, but uh, you know what does that actually deliver in terms of 
results and impressions and how can we then you know look to understand and quantify that as an asset by itself and and, and for me it's how do we continue to develop and uh you know commercial level how do we continue to develop that women's game and uh, and you know the standalone women's assets that we can potentially deliver for for brands because well, do you think you've seen a difference even in kind of even this summer or in the last 12 months you know since you've been involved in the club do you think you've seen a difference in approach to the commercialization of women's sport from you know from your perspective at burnley is is that is that something that's kind of happening before our eyes yeah i think so there's there's definitely more uh, more move into it um you know we are this this season is you know we we actually are looking at specifically writing writing into contracts women's appear, women's player appearances which is something that we hadn't actually done too much before you know we're actually looking at you know uh we 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 not we 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 separate our sleeve sponsorships out between the two clubs, given the relationship with TikTok there as well. So that almost becomes a standalone um, proposition itself. I think uh, I think we'll definitely see more and more of it. Um, now's now's a you know an opportune time for for the women's game to continue growing. Obviously, this summer's been a been a huge uh, huge and huge boost, and I think that you know as you say that you know Jill, what the Lionesses have done this summer has been nothing short of remarkable. So it'll definitely be the continuation. I think for us as a club. The, the, the key thing is to continue investing in, in our women's side and continue to push and, and hopefully we know our, our long term ambition is to be a Super League team so be the playing the women's Super League we hope to get there but in in the in the short term it's how do we how do we get better at understanding exactly what that, what that drives commercially how do we get better at you know um, developing the women's team on the pitch as well what are the short short gains short incremental gains we can make on that straight away to continue to support that of the business essentially Fantastic. i think i think sticking with the theme of of you know growth areas because obviously the women's women's side commercially is absolutely going to be a growth area for the club you know the more investment that goes into it the stronger it's going to get let's talk about the dude perfect partnership and you know what's that doing in terms of opening up new audiences what's that going to do for you in terms of a platform for international development obviously the u.s market in particular how how is you know, I mentioned a second ago, kind of seeing something change before your eyes. Is is that similar with that partnership and the catalyst for growth that's created? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know, the second largest YouTube uh, YouTubers, sports YouTubers in the world, uh, right? Which is which is amazing. I think they've have, they have over sixteen billion views on their videos. So it's like two video views per person in the world. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, in terms in terms of reach, it doesn't doesn't get much bigger than that. Uh, you know, I think it, it for us, it's kind of it's been led by our energy. You know, definitely in terms of their American presence, is how do we, you know, continue to expand into that market ourselves? You know, so there's there's, there's you know, the Premier League's you know this summer was you know again a summer series in the US where multiple teams went across. You know, so it's for us, it's actually how do we how do we leverage that and try and grow our our own media channels insofar as our own social media is. Um, you know, in line with that, in line with that growth and where the Premier League seems sees growth as well, so. Uh, yeah, for us, the, the the logical the logical step is because you know their their audience is is, is huge and is is a, is a young audience. If we can get you know a dude perfect fan in a Burnley shirt, the ambition is that when they grow up, they'll uh, they'll pick up a Burnley shirt no, no matter what because they you know the first shirt they had might might be because they prefer dude perfect perfect over Burnley, but it has dude perfect got on front of it, right? So. Yeah, we're, we're, that's interesting. Yeah, so that's is that is that kind of the catalyst behind having them on the youth team shirt? Then it's that kind of almost a younger fan internationally might identify with Dude Perfect as the lead brand rather than Burnley Football Club as the lead brand. Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely, it's it's how do we leverage how do we leverage that complete new audience? And um, you know when we when we announced that the the guys were on tour in the US and uh, we had them in, in Dude Perfect tops, uh, you know, and they were performing sold out arenas and across the US, right? So. There's, there's there's eyeballs on 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 Burnley as a brand that there never has been before, uh you know not no 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 detriment to the to the previous you know owners of the club I think they did a fantastic job in keeping Burnley in the Premier League for what was seven or eight years and yeah it was a you fantastic know, but, journey yeah you know they overachieved they overachieved yeah in compared to the budgets that are attributed with other clubs massively but you know the, this I think we've obviously just the nature of the new investment in the club is that there's, there's more eyeballs on it because as as I say, you know, Dude Perfect is an example, G, JJ Watt and, you know, ambitious an ambitious ownership group that want to push and, and move the needle faster faster than faster than the next club. Yeah, this is the next phase of the growth, right? That's what it's about. Yeah, definitely. And Marcus, the uh 
decision to brand the junior shirts with, you know, obviously the betting partner on the the adult shirts, it sort of frees up this asset of the junior shirts. Are you surprised, uh, you know, a commendable decision, a pretty innovative decision as well. Are you surprised that's not something we've seen more of from Premier League clubs who are unable to get the front of shirt partner on uh, on the junior shirts? Yeah, I, I think it's, we, we're mutually leveraging that that asset, I think, which is the key thing, yeah, um, here. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 an innovative play, and I think obviously Do Perfect has subsequently, you know, become a bigger part of the club now as as, in, as joint investors as well. So, you know, we're working with them really collaboratively as we over this season and beyond to say actually how do we continue to leverage them as a commercial asset as well. So, you know, they have a vested interest in us now, which is which is great. So, I think you know it's, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a pretty cool decision. It's a pretty cool thing to to do, you know, to for us to for us to go out to market and say that we you know we've done and 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 been been innovative at, at it. But I think it, you know, to to to, put to the previous point, it kind of shows kind of where the direction of the the, the, the Burnley's going. I think I mentioned to you, you to you guys in in, in comp, uh, you know previously that um so that one 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 cult football uh in Instagram called us describes us as this is not your dad's Burnley anymore. And I think uh, that kind of. Overly do perfect just plays into that rhetoric of the the direction that the clubs go. Well, I, another an, another thing that sort of feeds into that, and it made I think like the dude perfect shirts, they become uh, a symbol, not just a Burnley shirt. They become something deeper to a whole demographic of people. I think something else that made that with the uh, Burnley shirts was the classic football shirts logo on the front. Uh, and that was a championship partnership as well. I saw more Burnley shirts at festivals than I've ever seen before because I think they were. They were quite cool because of that partnership, large, largely. And yeah, I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about that collaboration and how it came about and what it what it added to the shirt as well as just being the assets. Yeah, definitely. So it just slightly predates me when when that deal was actually done, to to be honest. But um, you know, having worked with 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 the guys at Classic Football Shirts, you know, Matt, Doug, and Gary, the the the, the main the main sort of co-founders there, they're incredible to work with. You know, great guys, huge football fans, right? So. That always helps in terms of when you're looking at trying to do do certain activations. I think they, you know, it was a synergistic link anyway, because our shirt actually last that season was based on a 91 92 kit. Um, so it had that classic football shirt link as it were, as it was anyway. Uh, you know, for them it was the first time that they'd actually jumped in and and, and done a a photo shirt. Um they they had previously worked with Sheffield Sheffield United, the um the, one of the founding or the oldest club in the UK, I think it is. Um, but it, this was the first time they'd done something at, uh, at kind of a, 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 that this level. Um, and I think, yeah, it works well for both of us. You know, they, the, the logo looked great and the shirt was cool, which was great. But beyond that, we did, you know, we did quite a lot of things, you know, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of cool activations with them. Um, they they sacrificed their, their for a shirt sponsor for one game and we had Ensley, um, Ensley on it, who was, who was the shirt sponsor of the 91-92 kit. So that was a really cool. Uh, that was a really cool uh, activation. We had the NZ, NZ, NZ team here, and they, you know, they got this. They got they got their shirt, the shirt branded, and you know, we had, we ran a limited edition um, amount at the, in the retail shop, which sold out immediately. And then we're going on uh, being being sold on eBay for a ridiculous amounts of money. Uh, so we then and then we, you know, we had other stuff. We did uh, we did um, a Burnley business boost for them guys as well, which they sacrificed their their assets. Or sorry, didn't sacrifice, donated their assets for a game. So, um, you know, they gave they gave their LED pitch sides for a game up to a, a local Burnley business. Uh, as well as that, they are often working with our BSC in the community. We worked at the food bank, so we're the only club, one of the only clubs in the UK that owns and operates the food bank in the town. So, yeah, um, you know, they they were very active in supporting that. So. All in all, they they just were really keen to get involved and be part of the community, and I think yeah, uh, it could have gone much uh, much better for them in terms of kind of what we delivered in terms of media value as well. Because uh, yeah, obviously we we won the league last year, so it was a bit of a perfect partnership, and it, it ended 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 in a really nice way. No, it's fantastic, and I, I guess looking ahead, you know, current season, sticking on the theme of shirt partners, um, current season kind of moving to to a, to a betting partner on the front of the shirt. It's a pretty common sight that we see in the Premier League and we all know the reasons why, you know, global broadcast feed from the Premier League and huge audiences globally and a lot of these partners are globally focused. Um, you know, there's obviously a decision being taken from the clubs as as, uh, as kind of shareholders, stakeholders in the Premier League to take a decision to, to remove gambling advertising from the front of shirt. 
um, from a couple of seasons time do you want to talk us through a little bit around kind of the clubs beyond that obviously you're working with a with a gambling operator this year and you know, how how is how was that kind of with that backdrop and then knowing the conversations you were having for furniture kind of did that weigh into it at all or was it kind of pretty clear cut the investment from this industry is significantly more like how did that kind of weigh up for you guys yeah i think um look we, we i think as a, as a stance in kind of where we want to get to as an organization is we're totally aligned with the premier league's decision to to move away from gambling sponsors i think that's 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 our long-term strategy is as well as is, is to do that i think in terms of this season, um, you know, we we went we went into went out to market and, and and you know assess kind of what the options out there were for us. And you know, fundamentally, my my role is within within my within my role is in, is in the commercial. Uh, you know, I had a commercial is to ensure that we deliver, you know, the, the maximum amount of revenue to support our on pitch ambitions. Um, you know, but unfortunately, generally, the, as you know, you pointed out the gap the gap isn't 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 a, a small or insignificant you know difference at the moment so no not at all we we had to we had to commercially take that decision as an organization that if you know if yeah as i say to for, to really support our on pitch you know and that gap that, that's that's that is still candidly quite large between the, the bottom half and the top half of the premier league is we had to we had to take the best offer that was afforded to us and and that's and that's how we that's how we got to, that's how we got to, to where we are uh, I think as as well as that, you know, we're working with with as you mentioned, we, you know, it's W eighty eight who we work with, have kind of been effervescent in the Premier League for the past eight seasons. You know, they they came with a strong reputation. You know, we, we work very closely with them on activations. They wanted to they wanted to give back into the community as well and support in, in, in ways they can. So th- there was that that played it that played into it. But you know, in in in, in going back to kind of the Premier League's decision. Uh, yeah, I think we're totally aligned with that. I think we, we, you know, for us, our long-term plan is to evolve and develop some of these relationships that we've built. So, I mean, this summer we've announced 15 partners. We've hopefully got a couple more to announce uh, before the Villa game, <laughs> which is Sunday. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so, it's, it, yeah, it's it's been busy. And, you know, f- out of those partners, we've onboarded, I'd say, a minimum of three or four who uh, are sort of dipping their toe into sports marketing for the first time. You know, we really see that as an opportunity to, to, to sort of guess you know go with them hand in hand and say this is what this is what sports sports marketing can do for you you know we're, we're starting out with it this at a level that isn't a kit asset you know but how do we actually evolve those relationships to get there so i think for us it's about putting ourselves on a solid foot and you know when you're coming up from the championship the premier league the gap the gap that you want to achieve for your free shirt is big and trying to step someone up from you know, a championship budget to a Premier League budget is very difficult. So it's got to be. It's got to be. You, you, you go into a market where people are ready to buy, right? So you know, you you, you kind of play. You play into that market somewhat in our position. You know, the ambition hopefully now is that Vincent sort of solidifies as you know he's tied. He's he's in a five year contract with us. Hopefully, he solidifies us as, as a Premier League, you know, entity. We build up to that three years, and you know, three years time, we you know we've got those long term relationships where we've delivered, and uh, you know that's that's how we sort of reap the fruits of our hard work now hopefully you've talked a lot about data you've talked a lot about kind of some of the strategic partnerships you know they're not solely strategic but they're important strategic partnerships the dude perfect the tiktoks the platforms that you're looking to leverage the internationalization and all the rest of it are all of these parts of the steps that the new ownership are trying to put in place i guess to almost force innovation upon the club so that you know you can be more diverse in the types of partners that you're attracting like if you're onboarding three or four partners into Burnley that haven't been in the sports before you know it's only so long before you end up like you said either developing a partner into a position of being able to go on the front of shirt or securing someone you know outright to go on the front of shirt from from that kind of you know infrastructure development process I guess that you're on yeah I think that's that's all part of it right I think uh Look, we uh, we're we're a pretty young team here. Uh, you know, we're, we're, there's there's kind of no idea is a bad idea. We're, we're definitely failing fast and trying to learn pretty much every day, as cliche as it might sound. But but that's kind of you know that, that feeds feeds right down from the top. To be honest, you know, um, we're looking at ways we can innovate. You know, so we're we're openly active in terms of that, okay, how do we how do we leverage that? What do we what do you last do you know to bring in to bring in that? Or as you say, how do we strategically partner with organisations that? We know are going to help us grow as a, as an entity and organisation as well. So, so yeah, it, it's all part of it. You know, being honest with you, we've got ambitious, as I say, you know, ALK Capital kind of are are, are are the owners of the club, but they have they have ambitious, uh, you know, um, investors who you want to see results, right? So, 
you know, we, you know, and it's an it's an exciting organisation to be part of when you're part of that because you're not tasked with doing the, the bare minimum or the mundane. You're asked to go and strive, and you know, quite frankly, that's that's what what gets me out, gets me out of bed in the morning, right? And and likewise with with my team, you know, I want them to go and push and try and do new things. So, so yeah, I think it's it's a natural evolution, and you know, uh, we've got a lot of people working for this organisation now. We're super buoyant to that, which which contributes to it as well. Yeah, j- just off the back of that, and. You know, you mentioned uh, not my dad's Burnley and that that type of stuff. Obviously, Burnley is uh, globalizing, and you're you're increasing your markets that you're you're relevant in. How important is it that you, you do keep that community aspect? And you've mentioned it there with sort of sponsors donating to local businesses and local charities. How important is it that you know because the, the the core fans of Burnley are always going to be in Burnley. How important is it that you keep that community aspect and keep engaging the uh, the community of Burnley, if you know what I mean, yeah, a massive, massive answer to your question, Joe. I think we 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 totally understand and and realise how integral we are to this community. We are really the heartbeat of it. I mean, Burnley's a town of of, of over, just over ninety thousand people. It's it's relatively small, and for a, for a club, you know, that's situated in that town, we punch well above our weight. Uh, I think you, you, you'll you'll see it. I mean, in most of the relationships that we've we've kind of got over the line this summer. Uh, you know, a big part of that is actually how to integrate them into community. I think we we actually put ourselves in a quite a unique position in terms of we are sort of gone at that more global reach, but very much we're centered in terms of a northwest town. I think Vincent's, you know, uh, quote quoted one time saying, "If you knock on every door in Burnley, Burnley, it'll be open by a Burnley fan," and you know, never a true word was was spoken really. So it, it's it's a massive it's a massive part of what we're doing. I think you know when JJ comes over, for example, he's in, integrated into what the community what the community are doing the the the, the bfc in the community so our charitable organization he's really integral on what they're doing and likewise we're developing partnerships that uh that the 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 the, the, the sort of born in burnley but told told globally i suppose is the way we like to coin it uh and then you know likewise with our you know our current partners it's massive to make sure that we maintain and and, and keep those relationships with businesses who are based in burnley so you know, we work with Barfield Construction, who sponsor one of our stands, who be long-term sponsors. Uh, you know, we continue to work with them over the next next two or three years. So, how do we how do we continue to develop those relationships? I think, uh, you know, we 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 don't we definitely haven't forgotten who we are, but we, you know, we we've got uh, lofty ambitions to continue growing globally. Yeah, definitely, and it's it's good to hear that as well. It's really good to hear, and it's evident in some of the activations that we've seen as well. And I did just have one more for you on on Vincent Company. You know, speak so highly of him. How much is that uh, innovation contagious? And when you see the team on the pitch, uh, you know, doing innovative things, especially last season, they might have to be a bit more pragmatic this season. But especially last season, incredibly innovative. Uh, the the management really just trying new things, making new signings. Does that innovation run down to you as well? When you're obviously you don't answer to the manager, but you're you're wanting to be creative in the uh, in the commercial side of the business as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, yeah, it took a, it took a few Burnley fans by surprise last year when uh, year at Jog goalkeeper was doing Cruyff turns. <laughs> uh, do they? We, we they were often see, we've often seen that at Turf Moor before. Um, but yeah, no, look, we um, it's it, it, it definitely was. I think innovation does just sort of stretch right right through the organization you know we we've we've sat in rooms and and sort of been taken through the model of how you know how how the club is now scouting and how they're very data driven in in terms of how we look at that the way vincent lever you know works that that as a as part of our a part of our business model and you know developing young talent and and you know uh, to to become superstars is a big part of that as well so yeah that it it, it definitely does i think um yeah, yeah, you don't want to get left behind, right? It's the football. If they're doing really well on the football pitch, we need to make sure we're doing really well off the pitch as well. So yeah, it does it does kind of drive innovation across the organisation. Yeah, it's refreshing actually, Marcus, to hear that you had that conversation from the football department, that the football department and the commercial department are speaking that openly that you'll be briefed on. This is the way we're now doing things from in the football department because it gives you that that basis that when you're having those commercial conversations to 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 touch on those sorts of bits because. Let's be honest. The sexy part of of selling commercial partnerships for a football club is the football, right? You know, people want to be aligned with, you know, the football, the football department, the you know, the glitz and the glamour side of it, not just the, you know, the cold hard ROI statistics that exist, although they're important. Yeah, that it is right. You you you're placing your brand in a moment in, in time, the moment in history, and if uh, if 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 the product on the pitch, you know, whether that be for men's or women's team, is is 
is, is sexier for a better, lack of a better word, then that helps, right? Because uh, you know brands want to be associated with that. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it's been an evolution of it's been an evolution of our playing style. Uh, certainly more you know with the men's team as well. Um, so it does help. And it, it and as you say, it's you know we we have some we have strategy days where we sit sit with all departments of the club, and it's actually how do we you know how do we all play into it? Into that, into that, which is how do we ensure that we get results on that pitch? Because that's the that's the biggest that's the biggest driver for this for this organisation. So, how do we play into that? You know, how do we look at football cent- centricity? Is a, is a word that we use in the club. It's you know we're looking at partnerships that not only are commercially valuable to us, but how do they actually support our you know support our, support our football side of things? So you know we're working with a couple you know um, um, of, of our, a wellness brand, for example, that will support our the wellness of our team of staff staff and players we're working with ever the the mattress company they who've worked with a sleep consultancy with the players as well uh to to make sure that they they're well rested so you know there's all these sort of angles that we're, we're really trying to leverage as well as is is you know with the fundamental with the fundamental overarching thing being football centricity and and and, and marginal gains to make sure we deliver on that pitch fantastic mark as well Really exciting times for Burnley. Really exciting times for yourself as the commercial side of Burnley as well. And incredibly excited to see what they can do on the pitch this season in the Premier League. Thanks ever so much for joining us today. It's been a really insightful uh, discussion and yes, look forward to next time. But thanks ever so much, Marcus. Really appreciate your time and best of luck for the upcoming season.